Good evening, everybody. I have a special guest with us today. Um, he is growing up uh, a lot. Uh, it's been a while since you guys have seen him, but he is doing well. Um, if you don't know who this is, this is my son, Oliver. Uh, but no, I need that to stay right there, okay? Uh, today, we're going to be in, um, doing our class uh, over Acts chapter uh, 3. And then this lesson is going to talk about the, the lame man uh, walking at the gate called Beautiful. And uh, so if you got your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 2, sorry, Acts chapter 3, and we will start there. Starting at verse 1. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At three in the afternoon, now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg. From those going into the temple courts, when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, and as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention. Expecting to get some, expecting, sorry, I lost my spot because Oliver put his hand. Expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him at the same that this was the same man who used to, to used to sit begging at the temple called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to them. Oliver sees himself in the computer screen and is yelling at himself, uh, which is quite funny uh, when you think about it. But this story of the, the lame man at the gate called Beautiful, um, I'm going to read this uh the section out of a, a book that I have, I really think it explains it a lot better than I could. Um, and, and it says this. Although connected to the previous passage by the language of prayer and the setting of the temple, this text begins a narrative that runs through uh, chapter 4, verse 31. <clears throat> the passage breaks down into three parts. The setting, which is chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, the healing of the beggar, which is chapter four or chapter three, verses four through the beginning part of seven, and the response, which is the end of chapter uh, verse seven through ten. The miracle takes place in the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Luke gives some detail about the beggar who he was crippled from birth, over forty years old, and carried every. Oliver, Oliver just knocked down my second monitor, so apologize for that. <laughs> he carried every day to beg at the temple gates called Beautiful. Perhaps the ornate bronze door mentioned by uh, Josephus, um, the beggar sees Peter and John, who are about to enter the temple courts, and asks them for money. Now, this is I think this is really cool because there's... okay. First off, there's some people who carry him. Sorry, looking at the monitor, not the camera. There's some people who carry him to the to the gate called Beautiful every day, which makes those people unclean. But what's really interesting is that he's that people think that back then that his parents or he did something um, wrong, which caused him to have these defects. But Peter is very um, is trying to tell them that this is not the the case, um, and that's why he one helps them up here in a minute. But when he asks him for money, Luke Luke's account of the healing begins with Peter's command, "Look at us." 
After the beggar directs his, directs his attention to them, Peter says that he does not have money to give him. Which is very important because the whole point of this beggar is for money. And he's not expecting to be healed today. He's expecting to get some money to live off uh, a couple meals maybe. And um, just, just trying to do what he does every day. And so he says, look at me. And the man looks at him. And as soon as he looks at him, Peter says that he does not have any money. And I could just feel this man... This, this lame man just go, well, why did you tell me to look at you? This is pointless. And then he goes, um, that he does not have money to give him. Then Peter adds, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. A prominent theme in this extended account, the name of Jesus, refers to the person and power that comes through Jesus, deflecting attention from the doer of the sources of power. We, we see instances, instances like this where the disciples went out and came back and said that these people are doing, are healing people in, the, in your name. Is that okay? And Jesus goes, yes, because it's not them who is the healing. It's the power of God that is healing. Deflecting his attention to the doer to the source of the power. The man responds with a burst of activity and thanks. So, again, he's just wanting some money for food and for, uh, you know, just possibly even medicine. But, you know, more importantly, probably food. And he just goes. And, and now he can walk. And what, what's interesting is that the 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 text doesn't just say walk he was leaping and mentioned three and two times respectively all he found the nerf guns <laughs> um mentioned three and two times uh, respectively praising the people who recognized the beggar responded with wonder and amazement these responses contrast strongly with the later reaction of the Jewish leaders. And we'll talk about that in a couple days. But what's interesting is that this section begins a series of passage, passages altering between external conflict of, of narratives and an internal conflict narrative. The outside danger increases from threats to death within this cycle each of the external conflict narratives has a simple structure of a miraculous sign an arrest the response authorities and the results the only ex exception to this pattern is peter's sermon which is not surprising given luke's interest in the speeches of the book of acts so the book has very uh, a lot of miracles that are happening and in these, there's going to be arrests. There's going to be all, all this stuff that I just mentioned. But, you know, in this case, the people were just amazed. They were amazed that this man who has been begging his whole life is healed. So how can we apply this to our lives? How can we apply the story of the lame man walking? To us, well, we can uh, apply this by kind of what we just talked about. Every day we we go through our lives, and every day we we kind of go through this mentality of we're just going to be ha everything's going to happen the exact same way. Everything is going. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go home, talk to some friends, and then go to bed. Apparently, I'm being held hostage by the Nerf guns. And we kind of got this reality check a couple months ago with this COVID-19 stuff uh, going around. And it, it really put ourselves on a halt. And we kind of have this, this mentality that we kind of know what this means. But take it into the opposite direction of saying everything is going to be halted because of something good. Instead of the COVID-19 of the saying getting sick, 
take this opportunity to rest. Take this opportunity to build your relationship with God. And know that's hard because people are, are being sick and people are dying. But instead, let's see, let's take this for individually a saying, let's make this good. And instead of just doing every single thing, the same thing every day, maybe we can be healed by what's normal and have the ex the exhilarating fact of seeing for the first time who God really is. Guys, I hope that you guys are uh, having a great day and I hope that um, the noise in the background of Oliver, Oliver going around my office um, didn't distract you. Um, but I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys soon. Um, the church or the elders and Scott and I are talking about uh, a possible reopen day. We don't know that for sure yet, but we we're talking about it. So it's it's gonna happen soon. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I love you and I miss you and I know Megan and Oliver do too. So have a great day, guys. Bye bye.